Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to take you through the most exciting games coming out in the month of March for the Nintendo Switch, at least the ones we've chosen. As always, this is not an exhaustive list, this is just what we consider to be the most exciting, the shiniest, the chromiest, nicest games that we've found coming through the Nintendo Switch in the month of March. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. <laughs> Kicking things off on the 6th of March, we have Berserk Boy, and if you're looking at this and thinking, ha ha, is that a slight Mega Man influence I see? Uh, yeah, I've seen so many other Mega Man-like games in the past, and none of them have really captured my attention, and then a colleague of mine pointed this one out to me when I was making this list, and I was like, oh, for some reason this one's singing to me. I think part of it's the art style, it's just really nice, I'm a sucker for that. But this looks like it may have something special. Naturally the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, but yeah, this one's got my- this one's got my eye on it! Or I rather I've got my eye on it. That makes more sense. Then on the 7th of March we have Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley, which I've- <laughs> I did not expect and was announced like a, f a week ago or so now. The Moomins as a concept was something that I was familiar with when I was younger, but not not massively. I was aware of them and I've been aware of them my entire life, but they've never really been like a big part of it. Uh, Felix is the guy to talk about that. But you can't deny that this game just looks charming, you know, and just also just chilled out. And I, I love a chilled out game these days, you know. I love something, you know, sort of rambunctious and energetic and full of explosions and all that sort of thing, but I just as equally like something that's just chilled out, you know, relaxed. I can just go through it at my own pace and maybe just something charming and lovely happens rather than demons exploding. This style of game isn't easy to get right though, so I'm definitely gonna be a little bit wary going into this one, but I'm still gonna be looking out for it or it wouldn't be on this list. Then on the 8th of March, well, that's the nice, isn't it? 6th, 7th, 8th. We have Unicorn Overlord, which is made by the same people who made 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, and that's enough for me. Have I played the previous one? No, but I'm, you know, conscious enough to know when something's good, having not even played it because the internet is full of opinions. It's a tactical RPG at its heart, but more importantly, and I know I go on about art styles a lot, but this one's really nice. Just look at the art when you're in a fight. It's just, oh, it's just lovely. I don't know if I'm personally gonna be picking this one up, but I do know that Felix and Zeon are both extremely excited about it, so I'd be remiss if I didn't include it. I'm nothing if not an equal opportunities video man. Then on the 12th of March we have Contra Operation Gallagher, which is one of the more sort of like tenuous ones on this list, not because I think it's going to be poor, but just because we've had other Contra games on Switch and they haven't been great. And obviously I'm not talking about the classics, I just can't remember the name of the one that was released off the top of my head. Rogue Core, Rogue Core, of course. This definitely looks like they're trying to go more sort of back to basics and sort of stick to what was really good about the Contra series. Um, but again, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen. Rogue Core was a bit of a letdown to say the least, so... I don't know, I'm just a little bit wary, but you know, if they, if they do it right, it's gonna be a damn good time. I'm keeping both of my fingers crossed that that's the case. Then on the 13th of March, we have Llamasoft, the Jeff Minter story, which you could argue is technically not a game, but it kind of is, isn't it? This is an interactive documentary of sorts, and it's taking a look at, can I blow your mind, the life of Jeff Minter. I know. This bloke has made an incredible number of games and has had a really long running career in the industry. It may be personal bias, but he made a lot of games for a lot of old 8-bit retro computers that were from the United Kingdom, or at least United Kingdom centric. And as a result, I'm really interested in this game. You know, it, game develop is something that I, I, I've i always been on the edge of in my career. You know, I've never delved into it directly. And so to learn more from a character like this, that's just going to be a win-win for me. Then on the 14th of March, we've got Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. That was not on my bingo card for this year. <laughs> I've heard fantastic things about the original Star Wars Battlefront games, but never actually played them myself. I remember hearing about them when I was younger, and the idea that you could have, what is it, like 30-odd players online at the same time, that's just like, that's too many, you can't do that, the dial-up can't take it. It's presented by Aspire, who've done a load of other classic Star Wars games as well, so I, I have reasonable confidence in it. And it's got a load of new content as well. How can this go badly? 
Only if it's released on Switch and doesn't have online multiplayer or something. That was a joke, it has online multiplayer. No, no, put it down! Then on the 15th of March, that's even better. 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, come on! We have Kingdom Come Deliverance Royal Edition. Now this is a game that initially looks a lot like a lot of other RPGs, but from what I've seen online, it does an awful lot of things right. And that's, uh, that's good. It's set in the medieval period and it takes place in Bohemia, which is a real place, or, or to be more specific, it was. I'm getting kind of minor Witcher vibes from this, and I don't mean in terms of the setting, although it doesn't help that it's not that far away from Poland, but more in the way that it's an RPG that is focused on personal development and uh, you've got a lot of options, non-linear story, all that kind of thing. I don't know, that's pretty good. That's what I like from an RPG, you know, you, you, know, you, can, keep your, you can keep your star fields. I enjoyed it for a bit when it happened, but I've moved on. Then on the 21st of March, slight change of pace, we've got a game called Crimson, which, um, before I show you anything, um, I'm gonna have to put an epilepsy warning in here because this thing flashes like a, 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 a flashy thing. This game is bizarre and kind of simple, but I can't deny that visually and uh, orally, as an ear orally, you know, not the mouth orally, who thought that was a good idea. It is just like an attack on the senses and I can't deny it. it it's kind of engrossing. I, I played the demo on the Steam Deck and it, it's something all right. Um, it's not gonna be for everyone and I'm not saying it's gonna be remembered for decades to come, but it's it's got my attention. It's got my attention. How can I say any more than that? It looks horrible in a good way. Then on the 22nd of March, we have Princess Peach Showtime. Now I've already played this game, so I've got a full preview, which is available uh, on the channel. There'll be a link in the description, but I'll give you a quick rundown. This game is kind of all style and no substance, but the style is enough to carry it, and it is just utterly charming as a result. The gameplay is dead simple, um, but it's just it's just engaging enough to not be boring because the visuals are so stunning. I really enjoyed it. It's going to be interesting to see whether it can hold my attention for longer than the hour or so that I played it, but uh, we'll we'll see. Um, either way, it looks like it's certainly going to be a grand old time for younger players and people who just fancy an easy evening, which honestly sometimes is me. Then on the 26th of March, we have South Park Snow Day. Now, I've got to be honest, I am not that familiar with South Park in any form. <laughs> but I've heard very good things about some of the more recent games in the series, and so I think this has potential in the same way that any game in a long-running series uh, that's well regarded has potential. Curious to see how well it runs on Switch, considering that the uh, hardware is now significantly aging and it clearly was not designed uh, originally with the Switch in mind, or at least that's certainly how it appears and that's how most games are developed, but we're just gonna have to wait and see, aren't we? We're gonna have to wait and see come the 26th of March. Then on the 28th of March, we have Pepper Grinder. Now, if anyone enjoyed the drill sections from Sonic Colors like I did, you're gonna have a good time here. It's also a bit like some of the sections in Celeste, but like a whole game? That's not a bad thing in my view. Gorgeous art style, looks like it's brimming with secrets as well and interesting new ways to use the same core mechanic in interesting and different ways, which that's always the basis of a really solid game in my book. If you can take a simple idea and then just evolve it and make it utilize in different ways, expand upon it without having to just add in a load of necessarily gimmicks and, you know, loads of different layers and abilities, that can be good as well. But if you can get a solid core foundation and then make that into a good fun time, you have basically won my attention. It's as simple as that. Also, I like Pepper. And there you have it. Those are, in our opinion, the most exciting games coming to the Switch in the month of March. But did we miss something enormous? Something even shinier? Let us know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you tell that subscribe button about how you appreciate the new setup I've got. You know, it's uh, almost identical, except uh, it's, it, it's taller. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,